Okay, so we're moving on now to something a little more cheery, right? Um, so Michael Crichton has been one of those great filmmakers, and he's he's brought us a lot of good films over the years. Um, whether it's you know Jurassic Park or Disclosure, I mean some better than others. Okay, uh, truth be told. But that being said, it's one of those things where, I mean, I like lo- everybody. Lo- everybody loves uh, all most or, or a lot of his work, and you can see a lot of it right there. You've got Jurassic Park, which is probably the perennial one, right? I mean, that not only changed Hollywood, but you know, Lost World, eh, not so much. Um, but he's done some other really good work. Okay, I mean you. More important, I mean, I like Disclosure for what it was. You know, that was um, Demi Moore and, and uh, Michael Douglas and Donald Sutherland. That that was a good movie. That was fun. Not fun. Fun's not the right word. I'm going to rephrase that. It was, it was intriguing. It was a good, good drama. Good drama. Um, of course, you had, you know, the Andromeda Strain and several others. So the reason I bring this up, is because Michael Craig, so Blackstone, okay, um, is going to publish eight Michael Crichton novels, which he writ, which he wrote under the pseudonym John Lang when he was in Harvard Med School. So this is this is the article from Deadline. Um, Michael Crichton's brilliant mix of science and narrative results in north of ten billion dollars in film and. Let me just put this back up there. Um, Ten billion dollars. Uh, let's let's do that again. Uh, Ten million dollars in revenue and two hundred and fifty million books sold. Now the estate of the author, who died in two thousand eight, has made another major deal to bring his works back to new to new audiences. But Blackstone Publishing has made a seven figure deal with Crichton's son to acquire the worldwide print ebook audio rights to Crichton's first series of novels, which he wrote under the pseudonym John Lang. This was long before Jurassic Park, ER, and such, and he wrote the first three titles while he was at Harvard Med School. The side pursuit also came prior to his first breakout novel done under the Crichton name, which you you can see there up in the top left-hand corner, the 1971's The Andromeda Strain. The eight books, unconnected tales of fiction in numerous genres, will be shopped to studios and streamers for potential films and television adaptations. Perhaps Crichton didn't want to mix writing prescriptions with what he was doing, but he used the name John Lang for these books. Odds On in 1966, Scratch One in 1967, Easy Go in 1968, Zero Cool 1969, the Venom Business, 1969, Drug of Choice, 1970, Grave Descent, 1970, and Binary, 1972. Some of these novels touched on the science sandbox he wrote in later on with pulpy crime thriller twists. All the books are sent, set in the 1960s and 70s and were, in a way, his tribute to Ian Fleming's James Bond novels and one to his favorite, Alfred Hitchcock films, To Catch a Thief. The subjects range from secret treasures to heists, archaeology, unlikely heroes, classic villains, and seductive and at times treacherous lovers. At the time, Crichton becoming an author, uh, he thought it was a dream. Although he had the smarts to be a doctor, these books birthed a great writing career. Uh, The propulsion here is Crichton's son, CEO, Sherry Crichton, the author's widow, who overhauled the company in recent months. She signed the company and the book catalog to somebody at the Story Factory. And her intention is to generate all of these into work, film, television, publishing. The first deal by the restructured Crichton Son was a publishing partnership with James Patterson, who is another established author, who also moonlighted as an author to the CEO of the ad agency, J. Walter Thomas bring two of the biggest and most successful wordsmiths to collaborate on an unfinished Crichton manuscript. Um, 
Little Brown Company will publish it, and film and rights will be brokered in the near future. And then it goes it goes on for his career. Um, and then he went on to do, of course, ER. I think Michael Crichton is one of the best authors out there. Or he was one of the best authors out there. And his work is just amazing. I mean, everybody remembers him from Jurassic Park. And another film like Disclosure, even though Congo didn't do so well. But in Sphere, he's got a lot of good, good books out there. Um, but this is the show everybody remembers. ER. Right? You this was this was the powerhouse lineup on Thursday nights in the 1990s that you tuned in for. And they ended up doing over 15 years, they ended up doing 50, 330 episodes and won 23 Emmys. And that just goes to show you something, right? And, I mean, of course, this this was, now, mind you, this picture was the original cast. There were several others that came in and out. You know, the, I mean, you had a very young George Clooney there, Noel Wiley, you know, Juliana Margulies, you know, Anthony... Um, I'm blanking on his name. Anthony Edwards, of course, who starred in uh, Top Gun. But yeah, so th I mean, this was a that Thursday night lineup was huge back in the 90s. You had friends, you, you had ER, and that was this. And it was an amazing because it was authentic. It was good. It was quality. It had the drama there. It had the romance. It had everything we wanted. Um, so yeah, it, I'm really glad. And, and the fact that they're actually doing these books, I mean, it sounds to me, okay, like, I mean, I, I don't particularly care. And they probably changed some of these, you know, odds are on scratch one. But um, it looked like he was very, very prolific in what he was doing. I mean, this guy was, I mean, he turned out two books in a year. You know, not to mention going to med school, right? Um, yeah. And, and with some of these things, you know, dealing with, you know, archaeology and, you know, you have, you know, spy things and it just, it, it's, you know, unlikely heroes and classic villains. It's really interesting to see what they could make out of this. Um, you know, you've got the villains. It's just, it's one of those things where I think that it's, it's really good. He even wrote, you know, he did, he did another one, you know, one of the other ones he did later on. In the 1970s, it was called Drug of Choice. That could be interesting. That could be like a um, a doctor. I'm just, I'm spitballing. Could be a doctor that's, you know, an angel of death. And he's choosing all these different medications to kill his patients with. I don't know. I don't know. I would just get spitballing, like I said. But yeah. So I think that, um, I think this is a good move. I think it's a really good move. And I, I can't wait to see they have in the future for them. Um, what do you guys think? That's my question. What do you guys think? Do you think that, are you interested in this? Did Are you a big reader? Did you like Michael Crichton's books? If so, are you excited to see these books turned into television and film and everything else? Uh, if so, which ones out of the bunch do you think you'd be interested in? Leave your thoughts down in the comments for me.